on to the adventure and put my on W four C Y three. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with our next guest who, you know, I go all over the world doing interviews, and this is the first one that I've done in one of my favorite countries in the world, so we want to welcome Daniel from Savage Existence. He's, he's on with us from Costa Rica. How are you? Doing very well, sir. It's another beautiful day in Costa Rica. The rainy season has just begun. Literally, we got our first rain on the coast last night, which is great because, uh, as you would know, um, spending so much time on the Pacific Coast this time of year, everything is pretty crispy. You, yeah. You know, the leaves fall off the trees. Everything's really super dusty. And for us, where we are at, uh, at my hotel, Soltara Healing Center, our wells dry up too. So uh, in the in the area, all the wells dry up by this time of year. So it makes it hard for us to pump our own water on site. And sometimes the municipality rations our water supply. So they, you know, turn off the water at noon. And we have tanks, but sometimes the tanks don't get filled up. So then we end up having to drive in water trucks to supply the water for our site. So people can shower and everything like that. And that happens until the rains start. And uh, looks like the rains are just getting started. So that's always a joyous occasion for us here in Costa Rica. No doubt. I, You know, it was this last year that was the first time I went there during rainy season. I went during June. Usually I mm. go like January, February, March. And it's interesting because you and I were talking beforehand like, I go all over, but one of the main places I love to go is Nassara, which is all dirt roads. And it, it's quite interesting. You're talking about the dust. Like, it, it's everywhere. And then, like, I remember the first time I went, people told me, just bring the worst shoes you got because they're going to get destroyed. Because there, what they do is they lay molasses down on the dirt so that it keeps the dirt down. So, you're definitely destroying your shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just takes a, takes a certain amount of uh, preparation and um, and tact to do well in this environment down here. Just a couple of minor changes to you know keep your you got to get the right clothes for the right environment and and just kind of know how things work. But uh, totally, yeah. You know what was cool though? You're gonna love this story. So. I went to rent a car the first time I rented a car in Costa Rica and, you know, I got the full coverage because unlike here in the States, you know, you're not going to be covered by your credit card. Like I was told by many people, get the full coverage no matter what, like, because if you get a flat tire, you'll be jacked for like 500 bucks, you know, if you don't. So I did. And I asked the guy, I'm like, now does this cover me for everything? And he says, yes, unless... The vehicle goes down a river. And I'm thinking to myself at first, because I'm a newbie, you're going to laugh. Why the hell would my car go down a river? <laughs> like that, the, it just, it, it, did, I, it didn't even register to me. And then I was driving to Santa Teresa and I found out why. <laughs> <laughs> you have to cross rivers. That's right. You literally drive through rivers to get to some places here. And, and the, you know, the, depending on the time of year, the rivers can be at different levels. 
Yeah. You know, and, and at this time of year, there's basically no water in the rivers. You can drive right across or roads that go down and you drive right across or very little water. But then in the in the wet season, like in the rainy season or after a really big rain, those rivers can fill up pretty quickly. And then, you know, you go down and you swamp your car and then all of a sudden you got a car stuck in a river. Yeah. Totally. It, like, I was like, wow. And it was funny. One of my friends, a, a local, he took me and my daughter on this tour on quads on his motorcycle. We we're going through rivers and stuff. And, you know, you start getting a little cocky when and you don't know the lay of the land. And we're going through one place. And I saw him and my daughter, like, go around. And I, I was waving to him, like, can I just go straight through? And I started to, and he's like, he shook his head, no. And then he told me afterwards, of course, in Spanish, he's like, uh, yeah, uh, if you would have gone straight through, you, you definitely would have gone down the river. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, and I, I've learned my lesson, man. I've, uh, I've swamped a car in a river just basically trying to – just drive straight through without, you know, with, without getting out and like kind of looking at it. But I just, I, I tried to drive straight through. I drove a little bit too fast. A big wave of water came up on the front. It wasn't necessarily too deep for the car, but I just tried to, I didn't like strategically get across it. Right. Just drove straight through. Big, uh, big wave of water came in through the radiator and swamped the car and i ended up having to get my car towed you know replace replace the air filter and stuff like that which and dried out but yeah so now i was like okay new rule of thumb every single time i don't care how the water looks i get to the river unless i can see the bottom like if it's really low from the car i'll get to the river i will get out i will walk into the river my bare feet test the depth and usually there's a little path in the river like right. people people regularly cross it so you just kind of have to know where that little path is and then you slowly go across it and then you're good to go i know it's wild like you, you can't even explain this like i said when the guy said to me unless your car goes on the river like you couldn't even explain that to me until i experienced it i'm like oh <laughs> you know yeah uh hashtag, hashtag pura vida yeah there you go i love it so, so yeah, I mean, and I'll tell you when I'm down there, okay, so the locals all tell me I should open a studio, radio studio down there. And I thought about also like how cool would it be to set up like a metal festival in Costa Rica? Cause there's only one festival I know of in Costa Rica and it ain't metal. So maybe you and I will have to talk about that since you're already there. Cause how cool would that be? Well, we've actually been talking about that, um, doing like, uh, doing like a boat cruise down here, like a nice. metal boat cruise. Um, I've already actually done some investigations, made some calls and, and got some pricing on boats and things like that. Now, of course that was during the COVID restrictions. So it, it, it didn't make sense because they were really down your throat in terms of restrictions, but soon enough, uh, you know, we'll be able to grab a grab a big ass boat and do a big ass metal party on the, on the water somewhere, or even, you know, in a, in a field somewhere like Envision. But of course, metal is a very, very particular genre in that it's not the most popular genre. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, so you, your metal fest and, and even less so in Costa Rica, Costa Rica is not a hugely metal haven really it's more of the kind of lifestyle edm you know outdoor festivals with face paints and bikinis and stuff like that you know which is great but yeah it's not like europe where you're gonna find like huge massive outdoor metal festivals but perhaps you know perhaps you could get a couple thousand people there who knows there you go so Let's talk about how this all started, because that's why we're talking about Costa Rica, because basically you're in Costa Rica, but Savage Existence is basically an idea that started in Costa Rica. Am I correct? Yes, yeah, Savage Existence is an idea and a band that began. Uh, actually, that's kind of incorrect, because me and my uh, drummer are our best buddies from high school uh, and public school. So we lived on the same street. We were next door neighbors way back in the day. 
And we started playing together in high school with a couple other Canadian guys. And then we lived together in college and had a jam room in the basement. We used to play and write music down there, but it didn't go anywhere until now. So then fast forward, you know, 15 years or whatever, 20 years, it, it almost. We're here working together in Costa Rica. Um, I built this ayahuasca center in Costa Rica called Soltara Healing Center. Some of you will know... Uh, it as the place that uh, Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox recently came. They've been all, all over the news talking about their ayahuasca experiences and talk shows, Howard Stern, Jimmy Kimmel, etc. Oh, is that where um, it was? You're at your place? That's cool. Yeah. So anyways, I built this place down here about four years ago after a much like broader international uh, entrepreneurial journey that took me to many different countries. But I, I kind of settled in Costa Rica as I as I grew higher in age felt like a easier place to do business than some of the other places I was. And Jesse came down here, Jesse Radford, our drummer, he came down here to work as a chef because he, he developed his skills as a chef over the years and a graphic designer. He came down here to work a few years ago, I think in 2018, you know, while well, he was here, we just spent so much time talking about you know, oh, it would be great to get things going again. Oh, it would be great to write some music again. Oh, I can't. All I can think about is drumming and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so then in 2019, we got him a drum kit, you know, or actually, sorry, it was 2020, we got him a drum kit and he started practicing again. And, and we, we found a room at Soltara, this guard shack. It's like a little jailhouse, concrete floors and bars on the windows, no air conditioning dusty right in front of one of those dusty roads so everything gets covered in dust and we started jamming kind of like the old old garage band style started jamming there kind of reinvigorating a bunch of our old music writing some new stuff tweaking some of the old stuff that like now has you know need to be tweaked in the meantime i was like developing a friendship with logan mater who uh who many of you have probably heard of as you know being one of the founding members of machine head Went from Machine Head to Soulfly, and then he started producing music, left Soulfly, and, and produced a whole bunch of different bands like Five Finger Death Punch, Gojira, and many others. Fear Factory, I think, like Devil Driver, you know, so he's well connected to the music industry. I went to go see them for their 25th Machine Head, 25th Burn My Eyes reunion for Machine Head at the end of, uh, right at the beginning of 2020, actually, a couple weeks before shit hit the fan. So we were hanging out, we were cool buddies and everything, and I got this idea, you know, about like nine months after me and Jesse started practicing again, was, was to bring Logan down to Costa Rica and record the music that we had. In part, that was motivation to like, you know, just kind of, light a fire under our ass and you know we just we just love to write music and that's what happened logan came down to costa rica we rented a studio here and we went into the studio we had like six seven songs for sure and we're unsure we might have had a couple more that you know just needed a couple final tweaks so we recorded all those and then we actually had time for a couple covers so we did a machine head cover with logan on on guitar and a Lamb of God cover, also with Logan on, on guitar. And so in a matter of about like a week, we ended up getting 11 songs recorded, like just from an instrumentals perspective, two guitars, bass, drum, and, or sorry, two guitars, bass, guitar, and drums. And then so Logan left a bit early. We hung out here, went fishing, went deep sea fishing down in Capos, and then he, he, he returned back to Vegas. And when he left, uh, our last conversations were like, okay, so what, what can we do now? It's like, well, we need to find a singer. We need to find other, the singer's the most important thing. You know, we can kind of find other guitars and bass to just play the stuff we, we, we write, you know, but we really need a singer. So that was the final mission after Logan left. And fortunately, the studio, Costa Rica is a very small and tight knit country. The studio uh, which is called Calle Uno Recording Studios, run by Ricardo Padilla, who's like a, a famous local guy here, and his daughter Beatriz Padilla, who is running the whole project for us. 
she introduced us to a guy from a local band here called Wings of Destiny that just recently got back from the power metal band. They just recently got back from a tour with Timo Tolki. So this dude was a drummer. He came over, he met us and checked out the music. He really wanted to meet Logan and everything. And we exchanged contact and I asked him if he knew anybody who was a good singer for our style of music. And he put us in touch with the singer of his band, Anton Daruso. Yeah, then I quickly made contact with Anton. He came into the studio, had a had a few days, you know, I I, I actually like wrote wrote the bulk of the lyrics and, and did the vocal demos. He came into the studio about a week later. Logan flew back down here from Vegas. He smashed out the vocals. The guy's just an absolute beast. He smashed out the vocals in like two days for all 11 songs. I think it was like seven songs in one day and four songs in another day or something. Yeah, then we had a, then we had an album. It was done. Logan went back and mastered it. Anton found us a couple other guys for the band. Emil Minot, who's on bass, and Andres Castro, who's on lead guitar. Um, both actually our guys from uh, Wings of Destiny. So like I, I, I feel bad for the drummer who introduced us because we basically stole his band. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like they were just they were excited to get with the band who had a budget behind them and some, you know, entrepreneurial tact and realize, you know, like in the music industry, it's just as much the business aspect of it is just as much as the music aspect. So, you know, having some having some experience and some and some startup capital and some uh, entrepreneurial expertise on the team looked like a favorable option for them. So, you know, uh, it, it got exciting for them. We had Logan help us out to get on a label and, you know, he put us in touch with Metal Blade and Nuclear Blast. You know, they they were still kind of reeling from the pandemic and everything. So they basically said, well, give us a call in a year. In the meantime, you know, here's our digital distribution label, Blood Blast, which is a subsidiary of the same company that owns Nuclear Blast called Believe is like the largest distribution network in the world they signed us and released our first album animals which came out on november 19th 2021 yeah we we got connected with some of some of uh, anton's contacts in mexico set up a, a mexico tour for us we went we played some dates in december with monstrosity which is like a classic uh, death metal band uh, george corpse grinder fisher from cannibal corpse used to sing for them yeah we had a really great tour fucking just blasted it out really good crowd response and the guys all got along we got along like peas and carrots on the tour just you know just full of jokes and good times everybody helped very helpful really cool guys from costa rica super chill only three of us have substance abuse problems so that's good yeah then we came right off the heels of mexico went straight to vegas and recorded our second album which we had prepared in the meantime between, you know, finishing the recording on our first one and going to December, to uh, Mexico in December, went to Vegas, hooked up with Logan again. We recorded, uh, we recorded the drums in the hideout, which is uh, Kevin Turco's place where like five finger death punch records. We actually met Ivan Moody there, all kinds of other bands. Uh, Hell yeah. Uh, in this moment, Ozzy Osbourne, Chennai Twain, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, have recorded there, so it's a pretty popular place. We did our drums there, and then we went to the Hideout, or sorry, the Skeleton Key recording, which is Bobby Ferrari's place, who works with uh, what's his name, Bob Bob Parsons, and yeah, a bunch of other people, like well-known people, Queen, I think, and he's just well well established. We did all our our guitars and bass there. And then we went to Logan's home studio and did all the vocals in literally one day for nine songs. Anton just like was just blasting out like multiple takes and multiple tracks. Just like he'd go into the booth. Logan has this little, uh, it's like kind of like a phone booth sized isolation booth in his studio. Like Anton would go in and all you see is this thing just like, bouncing around like it was about to fall over you just hear these massive screams coming out of the speakers so he would crush out like a song per hour and we we nailed out nine songs and then we had our second album release and our first singles going out next month off the second album we're going to be releasing a single per month uh, until september and we drop the full album now we're going on tour with sepultura 
Uh, I'm leaving in a few days for Mexico. Our first show is on uh, the 13th in Mexico in Chihuahua. We're producing a show with Sepultura. We're on direct support for them, so we'll be playing right before they get on stage. And then we're doing it again on the 14th in Guadalajara and the 17th in Mexico City at the same place we play with Monstrosity, only in the big theater instead of the lobby. It's pretty dope. We're, yeah, we're just fucking going for it, man. And, and you know, just doing what we can. I love it. And, you know, you mentioned European festivals before. I, w- I was hoping you were going to say, yeah, and we're also going to play Hellfest and Se- Sepultura is going to be playing there, too. Because I'm going to be over covering that. We're actually the United States official radio station promoting Hellfest. Oh, that's dope, man. The the problem this year, so we got connected with a manager, John Pettigrass from Art, Artist Entertainment Management based in Syracuse, New York. We're working with uh, Chipster PR, who's well known in the industry. Both of them. And we got we got hooked up with them just kind of after we got back from Vegas earlier a couple months ago. It took us a little while to get onboarded, you know, get to know each other and, and, and set a strategy and everything like that. John's been making phone calls and trying to get us on these tours. The problem with Europe right now, like this season, is that they've canceled so many shows over. They've let me rephrase it. They've postponed so many shows in the past two years, like almost everyone. So right now it's just like musical chairs shuffling bands that have already like perhaps sold tickets or like bands that have been waiting to go over there for the past two years with all these existing contracts in place, just trying to like find space for the bands that are already in the mix. So it's a really tough time to start breaking a new band in the European circuit right now. But John's still working on it. He says, and even some festivals have refused to have any American or international bands come over, just strictly European bands because of restrictions. Yeah. And Europe's different because there's so many different countries that all have like different restrictions. So it's been just fucking mayhem for bands to try to navigate all of that oh, yeah. horseshit over the course of the pandemic so yeah it's just like john's been tr- he's got he's got a few prospects on on the hook and he's working hard at it but we'll see uh you know we will see there's some talk about some things going on in july and, and august perhaps over there and possibly september but yeah it's just it's it's tough times right now yeah, no doubt about it. You know, even myself, it's like I'm not going to really believe I'm going to be at Hellfest until I'm sitting in, in the crowd. Yeah, I feel that, man, for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, that is all way cool. I also read something that you had, uh, you know, a guest guitarist who I love, 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 Gary Hole. You know, Exodus is one of my favorite bands of all time, and Slayer is my favorite band of all time. So that kind of rocks. Yeah, man, Gary came into the studio. I met... Uh... I met Gary at the final sl- the final Slayer show. I did a meet and greet. Nice. Of course, I'm always trying to make connections. You know, I brought some business cards to the meet and greet. In the 30 seconds I had, let the guys know I run an ayahuasca center in Costa Rica. And Gary and Tom both seemed pretty interested. I hit up Gary. We got in touch, kept in touch over the, the months and years, I guess it would be did a podcast with him a a ways back and then yeah when it came time to look for guest guitarists uh, we were already in touch and and uh, I invited Gary to come down killed it he did a great job he did uh, two guitar solos on our title track for the new album which is called Matricide and then he did uh, one long solo on another song we have called Enigma and they both sound kick ass. He just rips. He came into I'm the studio. Sure. He spent about yeah half day to do three solos, but they just they absolutely rip. Classic line from the Enigma solo. He said, "Let's just get retarded with this one." So he just fucking <laughs> he just you know wah pedal harmonics whammy bar just <laughs> you know just loving crazy shit. I Gary love Holt it. Flair style. Totally and. You know, you know you're a good guitarist when Jeff Hammond hand picks you to be the one to be there when you're not gonna be. Like that it's kind of even eerie to me. It's kinda of like also I, I saw an interview recently where weirdly enough, Bon Scott handpicked Brian Johnson too. Mm. Wild, right? 
Yeah, I mean, Gary, Gary certainly earned his keep in the world. You know, he's been there forever since its inception, really. Yeah. And I go way back with that stuff. So here's some interesting trivia. I was at the second to last Slayer show doing uh, radio coverage for in Oakland, but I was also at the first ever Slayer show in L.A. Really? Yeah, and the, huh. and the first ever Metallica show, too. And then me and my bro used to, when it started getting lame in L.A. and Metallica left and Slayer left and all we were left with was glam, me and my bro would hitchhike to the Bay Area to go catch shows. And, that, of course, that's how I was introduced to Exodus. And, oh, my God. It, it, like, I'm just a thrash metalhead totally. So, you know, it, I, I, I was kind of geeking out on the fact that you had Gary playing with you. So there you go. And uh, you guys are definitely badass on your own, too. Cause, so I'm listening to new music, and it's badass. Everybody definitely has to check it out. Get your music. Uh, so how would people connect to you on social media, on the web, get your music, get your merch, tour dates, all that good stuff? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, all, all that good stuff can be found at our website, savageexistence.com. And of course, we're on social media at Savage Existence Official on all platforms. Uh, we're on YouTube. We've got a bunch of videos up on YouTube. Yeah, we're about to release a new video off this first album, off our new album. Sorry, this the first single off our new album, which is coming out on uh, April 5th, I believe. Either the April 5th or the 6th. Uh, that will be on YouTube as well. So we definitely have some good stuff up on YouTube. Several lyric videos, one or two music videos, press kit that, that introduced the band a little bit more. And an interview with Gary Holt, actually, and Logan Mader. We did a we did an uh, IG Live with, with both of those guys, along with me and Anton. That's up there. Yeah, so everything's on SavageExistence.com, Savage Existence Official on social, on YouTube. Uh, we do have a press kit, but uh, I think that's probably on our website as well. So, yeah, we're out there for sure. Nice. And I, everybody's definitely got to check you out. Uh, it's badass music. I love it. It's going to be a badass tour. So anybody that's near any of the dates you're playing with Sepultura, that's cool. Uh, check it out because we need live music right now more than ever. And so are there any other final words you want to leave the listeners with that we haven't covered already that they should know? Well, just that our second album is like 10 times better than our first. Our second <laughs> album is a, is, a, is a fucking force of destruction, man. It's really good. You know, we it's all new music. Uh, mostly I, I repurposed one one song from the old days, but it's all new music. There's and a lot more influence from Anton, who's a brilliant songwriter, a lot more collaborative. We had Andres as lead guitar. He's awesome as well. Like he's really mind blowing. He can bust out those solos. Yeah, it's just like next level. So the first album, it's good. We kind of it was a dream come true for us to to get everything on record, you know, and and for Logan to really spice it up and and make it sound good and to say what we wanted to say in the lyrics and everything like that. Second album, just like takes it to the next level. Um, so that's going to be coming out soon. That's probably what we're most excited about. And we're already working on a third album. So there's lots of new shit coming. Man, you guys are busy as can be. And it shows. And I and I do have to make a comment on the video and the song, A Thousand Pounds of Train Wreck. Immediately before I even listen to it, I'm like, yeah, I got to listen to that song because that song is just about every single thing that's going on in the world today, just based on the name without even me knowing anything else before I listen to this song. Yeah, well, you know, we kind of, the uh, thing is, you know, as an entrepreneur, I have, a, I have a certain obligation to, you know, kind of monitor what, and pay attention to what's going on in the world and what kind of trends and undercurrents are happening. And so it gives me a certain degree of, of awareness. And then also, you know, with the filter of an entrepreneur and the mindset of an entrepreneur, a certain level of frustration at some things that are happening, Told. you know, and I just want the best for the world and the best for everybody. So we're not trying to be negative about anything, but we are trying to call out some fucking serious bullshit you know, basically communicate a message of, 
of like, you know, individual strength and, you know, be, being tough and being thick skinned and going out and getting what's, what's yours in life and, and not letting the kind of the corrupt media infrastructure and, you know, just this like all this political bullshit and discourse that is really just like a cancer in society right now, not letting that destroy your ability to to go and 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 live the life of your dreams you know no so doubt. we talked a lot about that stuff especially on the new album too there's a couple songs that are just brutal like this the first song that we're dropping in april is a, it's called dumpster water it's basically just taking a machete to the big media big pharma big government big tech collusion that that took place throughout the pandemic and is you know it's just reeked so much havoc on on society with just the the ubiquitous distribution of toxic prescription drugs over like natural remedies and uh just this relentless drive to profit and then like this media manipulation and you know control and deception so yeah we based and we we did a a dope lyric video with that so people get to actually read the lyrics and it's just it's just brutal. And then the song we have coming after that in June is called Cull. It's equally brutal. And we're going to make a video for that song with footage from our Sepultura tour, uh, as well as Global Carnage from around the world that we'll, we'll edit in. It'll be a lyric video, too. So, um, yeah, you know, we're really just trying to call it out and, and, and do some damage. Well, you're definitely doing some damage with some brutal music, so I love it. And, you know, we have another radio station here at the network that's dedicated strictly to health and wellness, and, and I'm all into the natural health and wellness thing. We'll definitely have to talk again and maybe do an interview about your healing center there for sure. And I definitely, why don't you, while we're on here, why don't you give a shout out, you know, of ways to connect to your healing center, uh, you know, and get information, all that for those of you listening uh, that may not know, but th this is the healing center that you've been seeing all over talk shows and the news. Let's give a little shout out for that. So it's called Soltara Healing Center. Uh, our website is soltara.co. We are on social media at Soltara Healing Center. And yeah, we're doing really good, man. We, you know, I, I built, I built this one place four years ago in Costa Rica in a place called Playa Blanca. It's on the Pacific side, actually it's the two and a half hours south of Nosara on the Nicoya Peninsula. And we just recently opened up a place in Peru. Nice. So now we've got a place in the Amazon. And actually in January, we, we opened up a place in Tamarindo as well, which is like a joint venture. So we're doing some limited uh, additional retreats there throughout the summer and currently working on closing a property in Playa Coyote, which is also, uh, well, it's about 60 kilometers north of uh, Santa Teresa. So it's, it's actually between Santa Teresa and Samara on that coast. So, you know, okay. something, the same Guanacaste, beautiful Guanacaste coast. So hopefully, you know, we're, uh, everything keeps going well. And, you know, we get, give people lots of options to choose their, choose their paradise, depending on their budget, you know, interest in, in environment. So yeah, come check us out. Also, we have a 1-800 number, 1-800-397-1730. And you can call and actually talk to a real human. Hey, what a concept there, huh? <laughs> you know, like nowadays to talk to a human is it's seriously hard work. <laughs> yeah. So, Press zero to I know, right? right? It, I listen, my kids will tell you, like I that's I rarely lose it, okay? I am totally in Zen with myself except when that happens. And I, I just lose it. Throw my call, uh, phone out the window, and you'll hear me like screaming and stuff. Just let me speak to a real person, like into the computer, <laughs> into the AI. <laughs> and you know, it actually works. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've called places and I just start yelling at the AI to give me a person, and and, and they finally just do. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that, man. I think there's probably most of your listeners have, have had similar experiences. <laughs> no doubt. 
Uh, I love it. I love that you're healing people in many ways because to me, music's a, a great healer and uh, we need it more than ever right now. And so real cool to hear all sides of you and everybody has to check it all out. The music's badass. So you know, you definitely have to check the music out and check out the healing center too because I'm telling you, I was pre-med in college. I've studied a lot and... You know what? Western medicine just ain't the gig, in my opinion. And uh, maybe you should look for some other things that can naturally heal your body. And Daniel could definitely help you with that. Absolutely. Well, thanks for being with us, giving us great music, great healing. And thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Absolutely. Thank you, Dean. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for the time. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man. On W4CY Radio.